Today, we're gonna to be showing you guys how to make a no-frame ottoman. This project has no frame and is just made out of fabric and foam. It's a fairly simple upholstery project that will spruce up your home or workspace. You can make an ottoman that is footstool height or one that is stool height for a seating option. The choice is yours. We are gonna be showing you guys how to make the larger ottoman, but we'll give you the dimensions for both sizes so that you can apply the same principles to either. For this cushion DIY, we've chosen a Krypton home fabric. Krypton home fabrics are known for their durability while remaining incredibly soft and luxurious. Designed with proprietary stain and odor resistant technology, Krypton fabrics can handle anything that you throw at them. Kids, pets, spills, nothing is too messy for Krypton. If you're looking for a dependable, worry-free fabric that can keep up with your active lifestyle, Krypton is the fabric for you. To get started, we're gonna show you the tools and materials that you're gonna need, and then we'll get started with the project. The first material you will need is foam. We are gonna be using Cushion Right foam for this project, which we cut in-house here at Sailrite. If you wanna learn more about our Cushion Right foam, be sure to check out the video linked in the info button in the top right corner. You can make this ottoman to any size that you'd like, but for this video, we've made two sizes. The taller ottoman is 18 inches by 18 inches, and our slightly shorter one is 18 inches by 12 inches. Since we will be making the taller one for today's video, we will be using 12 inches total of firm foam and six inches total of soft foam. And because we're gonna be using different foam firmnesses, we will be layering multiple pieces together with a foam spray adhesive to build the height that we need. When layering different foam firmnesses, you'll want to use a firmer foam with a higher IFD as a base layer and a softer foam with a lower IFD on top. So think of your firm base layer as your stabilizer, kind of like a box spring for a mattress. So no matter how soft your top foam is, you'll always have this layer of support. This will ensure that your cushion or ottoman still feels comfortable even with everyday use. Moving on to our other materials. We have two yards of Krypton fabric, and like we've already talked about, we love Krypton fabric for its upholstery because it's a beautiful performance fabric. For this ottoman, we're gonna be using Himalaya denim fabric, which you can find on our website along with a variety of other patterns and colors. You'll also need one yard of cushion underlining fabric and some batting. We will need four feet of Linzip white continuous coil zipper chain and a matching Linzip zipper pool. These will both be a size five some fabric clips, silk film, six feet of cording, and foam spray adhesive. Next, we have our tools. So first up is our blade foam saw. This tool is essential to quickly and professionally cutting foam down to size. Then we have an acrylic ruler, a cutting tool, a variety of marking tools, and our foam shaper. In the upholstery package, we are gonna be using the thread snips, the extra bobbins and the bobbin boat, the seam ripper, quarter inch basting tape, sewing machine thread cutter, the size 18 needles, and the white V92 thread. So really, we're gonna be using most of the items in this package. And if you're interested in learning more about our Ultrafeed upgrade packages, make sure to check our video out that goes over all the options that we offer. We've linked it down in the description below, as well as in the info button in the top right corner. So now that we have all of our materials and tools gathered and ready for the project, we can start. So the first thing that we're gonna do is pattern and cut our fabric. Here are the patterns for the two different sizes. We've also linked this PDF pattern in the description below. First thing that we are gonna assemble is the side of the ottoman. We will take the four pieces that are 18 and a half inches by 18 and a half inches and clip them together with the wrong sides of the fabric facing out. It will make this square shape when they're all clipped together. Then take it over to the sewing machine and sew each panel together with a half inch seam allowance. 
You'll want to make sure to start a half inch down from the top and leave a half inch unstitched at the bottom. This will just make it easier to attach these panels to the top and bottom panel later on. With the side panels joined, we can now attach them to our top panel, but before we do, we will need to make 72 inches of piping. If you don't already know how to make custom piping with your fabric, you can check out our video on how to do it in the top right corner. Since we already have a video going in depth on this step, we will just quickly go through it here. Take the top panel and lay it so that the right side is facing up. Then add the piping to the edges with clips. Start the piping a little bit past the middle of whatever side you want to be the back of the ottoman. When you get to the corners, make the turn as close as you can to 90 degrees. That way you'll just achieve a sharp square shape. If you have piping that doesn't have pre-cut slits along the edge, which ours doesn't, you will need to use scissors to make some notches in the piping to allow the fabric to turn well. Once you get back to the start, we'll show you how to put the two ends together. Start by pulling the fabric back a few inches where the two ends cross over. You might have to rip out some stitches to do this. Then line up the cording like so and cut both of them so that they will perfectly match up with each other. Fold the outside fabric in on the ends to create a professional transition between the two ends of the piping without any fraying. Now tuck one side of the piping into the other. Now we're gonna take this piece over to the sewing machine and sew this piping into place. Since our UltraFeed LS has a built-in piping foot, we will line up the piping in the groove of the presser foot and feed the fabric through as we sew. We don't need to worry about backstitching at the beginning because we're gonna sew back over it once we've gone all the way around. As we approach the corner, we will take our time, hand cranking if needed to keep the stitches as close to the piping as possible without going through the cording. Because we're using the speed reduction package, we have the control to take this turn stitch by stitch. The next step is to add the sides of the ottoman that we've already sewn together to the top panel. We are gonna hold the assembly in place with clips, but if your fabric allows, you can also use basting tape or pins. If they're slightly off, you can either condense fabric or stretch the fabric to better line it up. Then take this back over to the sewing machine and sew it into place. Again, we're gonna be using the piping foot to guide the stitch with a half inch seam allowance. Once we've attached the side panels to the top panel, we can go ahead and set this to the side and now we're gonna be working on the bottom of our cushion. So go ahead and pull out the piece that we've cut from the cushion underlining fabric. Before attaching this to our ottoman, we need to add a zipper. We are gonna mark a U shape where our zipper will go. Take your ruler and measure two inches down from the top and two inches from the sides on all four corners. Then use those marks as the edge to mark your U shape. To get rounded corners, we traced our basting tape, but you can also use anything else that has the curved shape that you want. Make sure you don't do too sharp of a curve or the zipper won't lay flat, nor will it be able to zip properly. Next, we are gonna take our zipper chain and apply half inch basting tape to both edges. You will want the basting tape to be as close to the edge as possible so that it doesn't get caught in the slider. Now remove part of the transfer paper on one side. We recommend starting with the side that will be on the outside of the U shape. Then line up the middle of the zipper chain with the line that you marked and baste it into place. Once you have the outside basted, you can remove the transfer paper on the inside and baste that into place as well. Because you will be taking some corners, you will have to distribute some wrinkles to accommodate the fabric shrinkage at those points. Because we're using basting tape, if you want to adjust or change anything, like reworking the wrinkles, you can easily pull it up and readjust this. At this point, you can go ahead and add your zipper slider to the application. Make sure that the pull tab is facing down so that it's under the chain as we look at it from here. That way, when we turn the application to the right side, the slider will be accessible. Go ahead and slide the zipper up a little ways. With the extra zipper chain, you can now cut it down so that it starts two inches from the top edge on both sides. Once you're happy with how the zipper is laying, you can sew it into place on each side. For sewing this stitch around the zipper, we are gonna switch our machine foot to the right zipper foot, which is also included in the upholstery package for the UltraFeed LS. 
Now we're gonna take two pieces of our cushion underlining fabric that's the same width of the chain in a few inches long, and we're gonna fold it in half and sew it to the end to act as a zipper stop. The last step of the zipper installation is to flip it to the side that will be facing out and get your seam ripper. Gently poke a hole in the liner about an inch away from the start of the zipper. Once you've cut a small slit there, flip it to the end with the safety ball and guide the seam ripper around the liner while keeping it lined up with the middle of the zipper chain track. At the opposite end, we're also gonna stop an inch or so out from the end so that when we zip up the cushion, the zipper can be pushed back and hidden under the uncut ending point. This will create a hidden zipper to protect it from wear and tear. The bottom piece is now ready to be attached to the rest of the cushion. So we're gonna flip this inside out and clip it in place. Just like with the rest of the cushion panels, clip the panel in place with all the wrong sides facing out. Then sew around the edges with a half inch seam allowance. The cushion cover is now made, so it's time to work on the inside of the cushion, which is foam. We are gonna be using some scrap foam that we have on hand, so feel free to use a combination of whatever foam that you have. So for us, we are gonna stack and glue layers of foam to create a total height of 18 inches. 12 of those inches will be firm foam, and six of those inches will be soft foam. Putting firm foam on the bottom will provide structure, and putting soft foam on the top will provide comfort. The scrap foam that we have here is six inches of firm and three inches of soft foam. So with that combination of foam, we are gonna cut two pieces of the six inch firm foam and two pieces of the three inch soft foam. First, we're gonna measure and mark all of our squares of foam, which are all gonna be 18 inches by 18 inches. Then we're gonna cut it out using our blade foam saw. We have all four pieces cut out and we're now gonna assemble them using some foam spray adhesive. Spray both foam surfaces that will be glued together. Then wait until the spray is tacky. Once it is, carefully place the pieces on top of each other, making sure that the edges are lined up. Then repeat these steps for each piece until you've reached the correct height. At this point, if there's any parts of the foam that are just slightly off, you can use the foam shaper to kind of shape that into place. But next, we're gonna be adding some batting to the edge to make the edges even smoother. Once you have your foam block assembled, it's time to put it in our ottoman cover. Before you place your foam in the cushion, be sure that the soft side of the foam is at the bottom so that when it's placed in the cover, it will be at the top of the ottoman. Place the foam in silk film, making sure to cover the whole thing. Then use a shop vac or vacuum tube to compress the foam enough until you can place it in the cushion. Sometimes it can be easier to have a friend help with this step, so that's what we're gonna do. Once you have the foam in position, you can remove the vacuum and let the foam expand. If this process is going slow, you can always rip the silk film just a little bit to speed up the process. Make sure that the foam fits properly in the corners. Then tuck the silk film behind the foam in the cushion so that it doesn't get caught by the zipper teeth. You now have a square ottoman. Again, you can apply the same steps to make a larger or smaller ottoman to fit your space. If you'd like to see more DIY projects like this one, be sure to subscribe to our channel because we have some exciting videos coming up in the next few weeks. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.